let me turn into our resource person this evening he is a certified zig zigma master black belt from caterpillar incorporation usa and completed his bsc engineering degree from university of moratua and masters in business and organizational psychology from coventry university he is currently reading for becoming a certified coach from international coaching federation being an associate member of chartered institute of management accountants he has served as a member of sima country network panel and in various advisory committees such as branding committee employee relations committee and cxo committee of sima he is a member of ppd committee of institute institute of engineers sri lanka and has served in professional affairs committee and mechanical engineers sectional committee as well he was member of department industry consultative board department of mechanical engineering university of moratua and the industry advisory committee of mechanical and production engineering department university of rome he has served in various industries such as automotive telco apparel finance and banking across various functions at present he serves as the general manager corporate continuous improvement as united tractor and equipment buyer ladies and gentlemen please welcome the resource person this evening mr tarak daya bandar good evening mr tarak now the platform is yours uh, good evening uh, dayan uh, thank you for that uh, nice introduction uh, so uh, let me try to share my screen to you all so it all started in uh, early 1800s actually when the pro first production uh, uh, in, uh, industrial revolution started so a, a person named eli whitney he discovered a machine called gin uh, to uh, uh, to in which increased the industrial productivity because by the time uh, the cotton industry was becoming uh, uh, commercially not viable due to the a high labor cost incurred in the uh, extraction of cotton uh, so uh, th this was in the first industrial revolution it was the starting of first industrial revolution in uh, early 1800 so uh, so many inventions happened towards uh, improving productivity uh, mainly i will jump on to western electric in uh, in in mid 1900s 1920s probably uh, in western electric Uh, specifically in hawthorn factory in illinois uh, usa became a breeding ground for many quality related leaders people like uh, edward deming uh, joseph duran walter schwart some of you have already uh, probably heard about these people these people were working for western electric by the time and uh, conducting various experiments uh, in relation to quality actually uh, uh, some of you would have heard about the control charge control charge is a invention of western from western electric in 1924 volta short introduced a, a, a control charge from western electric so uh, there are so many innovations happened uh, during this time uh, uh, in uh, in the interest of improving the productivity and quality uh, don't worry my screen is blank uh, i Uh, one of the major things is when uh, in in uh, uh, 1980s uh, USA realized Japanese product products are invading the US market. They start to realize we need to really see what what Japanese are doing right. So uh, one one of the major findings they saw was that uh, Japanese uh, industrialists are sharing their best practices among the competitors. uh they are in us it is it is not it was not a accepted practice so to make sure the best practices industry best practices are shared among these uh, leaders they introduce a, a platform called uh, malcolm boldridge national quality award in 1987 so uh, uh this was with the understanding where the uh, the winners of this award will have to come come up front and share they are best practices with all the rest of the participants so in 1987 the winner of this award was uh, for the first time was the was motorola 
so more trolla uh, because of that had to come in front and share uh, their best practice story of uh, to everyone so when they are sharing their best practice uh, they were sharing uh, about a project by the name of project bandi uh, th this project was focusing about uh, improving their uh, pages by the time there was the product called pages some of you would have not seen the pages uh, so this uh, this pro project followed a methodology called make m a i c which has uh, which uh, four projects uh, phases in 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 stages measure analyze improve and control so many of the industrial list and uh, the consultants got together they are after improving this methodology further and they added a defined stage in front of uh, all these five, four phases to make it five stages uh, define measure analyze improve and control so this is how the six sigma methodology d make methodology incubated so after these many industrialists when many uh, manufacturing organizations uh, uh, embrace six sigma methodology so one, uh, one of the highlights were in 19 uh, in um, uh, mid 1990s uh, an organization called Elite Signal, uh, electronic device manufacturing organization. Uh, they, their CEO by the name of Eli Busadi, uh, he he embraced Six Sigma in his organization. Uh, in this time, uh, he made a lot of success in this uh, using this methodology, uh, and he he shared his practices, his best uh, learning with one of his very good friends by the name of Jack Welch. So Jack Welch also become fond of this uh, technology, this methodology and started using uh, this technology uh, methodology in his organization as the CEO of General Electric. Uh, as he implemented Six Sigma in General Electric, his uh, savings from his projects and uh, all other benefits achieved were well documented and uh, very much preferred by many industrialists and he made the Six Sigma very popular methodology commonly used everywhere uh, when it comes to today. So uh, that was a brief introduction about Six Sigma. I wanted you to show, uh, explain a bit of a history how this thing came into being uh, as Six Sigma. Uh, so now we'll see uh, what this Six Sigma really mean. If we, if we ask uh, Jack Welch, uh, he's now expired a couple of months ago, he passed away. Uh, he, he had said what Six Sigma is. So based on him, uh, Six Sigma is a quality program that when all said and done, improves your customer experience, lowers your costs and builds better leaders. So in this, if you can read between the lines, he says, it's not only about defects or qualities. It's about the things that impact quality as well. So this is the same concept in, uh, in uh, 1950s, uh, Joseph Duran introduced as big Q and small Q. So these are the minute things added up at developing this as Six Sigma methodology. Uh, and also some keywords, cu customer experience. Customer experience is being spoken about very high uh, in industrialists today. But during the time earlier, uh, also, uh, they were focusing about customer experience using the Six Sigma methodology. So now we'll see what this, what really uh, six, this Six Sigma denotes. So Sigma letter, of course, we all know it's a Greek letter representing the statistical unit of measurement. Uh, most of you, uh, as engineering undergrads, probably uh, I also as an undergrad in engineering have started uh, studied uh, statistics. So we know it, re it represents the standard deviation. In particular, the standard deviation of a population, not a sample, sigma denotes the standard deviation of a population. But of course, in this scenario, it refers to uh, variability. It is a name given to indicate how much data falls within customer requirement. The higher the process sigma, the more the process outputs, products and services meet customer requirements and so on. 
So as the as the sigma level increases, some of you would have studied about the normal distribution by now with statistics. You would know what are the quality levels with different sigma levels. Of course, at six sigma level, that is 99.99966. Rather, we uh, we call it as 3.4 failures per million opportunity. So that is the six sigma level of quality. So similarly, uh, other levels of sigma also can be given uh, 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 defects levels. See, uh, four sigma level is 99.379, which is 6,210 defects per million opportunity. So uh, similarly, other sigma levels can also be given. So rather, when we talk about six sigma as a methodology, it is not I'm repeating, it is not a destination of quality to achieve this 3.4 failures per million opportunities. It is not. That is not what it is. Six Sigma methodology is rather an excellence drive where you try to improve your level of quality further. Say, for instance, an industry such as aviation, pharmaceuticals, can't just settle down with six sigma level of quality. Uh, for instance, now in the aviation industry, in normal circumstances, uh, uh, usually commercial passenger aircraft, uh, there are about 1 million takeoffs and landings taking place in a given week. I'm talking about the uh, situation in a non pandemic situation. So there are about 1 million takeoffs and landings taking place in one given week. Uh, with six sigma quality level, just imagine, are we okay with three to four crash landing? Serious. So it is very easy to figure out the level of six sigma quality is not acceptable in certain industry. Similarly, it applies to pharmaceuticals industry as well. However, as we improve the level of sigma, the, the amount of effort we have to put in improving our level of quality is quite high. Say we, we try to achieve from three sigma to four sigma, we are trying to achieve from 67,000 parts per million to 6,200. This is about 10 times improvement. Uh, compare this to uh, going from four sigma to five sigma, there are parts uh, uh, the defects has to improve from 6,200 to 230. This is about 30 times improvement. Going from 5 to 6 sigma, from 230 parts per million to 3.4, that's about 70 times improvement. So it's rather very easy to figure out the amount of effort we have to put in improving the level of sigma is high when we improve the sigma quality level. Also, as an organization, we always we do not strive to achieve the six sigma level because the commercially at times it, it does not become viable. So as, as organization, mainly we try to achieve, uh, find out what is our best fit point, what is our optimum quality point to operate. So and operate on that condition but rather which, with using robust engineering and DMEDI methodologies, this can be further enhanced as well, but still we need to find out what is, the, that, what is that sweet spot of optimum operation point in quality. So you, all the industries does not have to go to six sigma level of quality. Some industry have to certainly go beyond that. Some of them might operate maybe three, four sigma level as well. So depending on the various situations. So uh, methodology being used at Caterpillar, of course, we started at Caterpillar at, as Diane mentioned uh, in early 2000s uh, and then started extending the learnings towards suppliers, dealers and cu customers. So extending from there now today, you all are also learning about what Caterpillar has found about this uh, uh, methodology in in implementing Lean Six Sigma within its enterprise. 
So where can we, the question means, where can we implement these learnings? Mainly we can apply these learnings wherever there is an opportunity for improvement. We, we do not say where there are problems, we always take it by positive words, saying we, wherever we find opportunity for improvement. So where do we find opportunity for improvement? We find this opportunity for improvement in the places where there, there are uh, performance variation and waste. Then where is this performance variations and waste exist? Performance variations and waste exist in the places with, where there are processes, where there are performance indicators. So uh, then our question is, where are these processes? Why do, why do we use processes? Then we know we use processes whenever there is a product or service to be delivered to a customer. So that is where we use Six Sigma uh, in, uh, in, in, a, uh, in a usual context. Of course, when we say a process, it, uh, process has to be delivering the customer value. Wherever there is a process, we can apply Six Sigma. Say, for instance, the, the process of you getting ready to come to your lecture from the, from the time you get up from the bed in the hostel and get ready and have your breakfast and use your uh, mode of transport, maybe walk to your lecture hall. So that is the process of uh, coming to the lecture. So the timings taken could be different if you take data uh, for, for the time taken from getting up uh, and arriving at the lecture hall for a period of one month, the timings taken uh, during this month is always not the same. There, there's a variation. So there's a performance variation. So there's an opportunity for improvement. So we'll discuss how this can be improved. Certainly when we uh, do Six Sigma project, Lean Six Sigma projects, we put it down in a project charter, what are we going to do to be exact so everybody is clear what are we going to focus. So we call this uh, as one executive summary, of course, we, we call it as the six pack project charter, six pack project charter. So uh, we call it six pack because there are six elements in this project charter. Of course, the business case will explain the what benefit will be realized. And opportunity statement, uh, what kind of pain is experiencing by the customer and by the business, say, uh, the, the about that process, you are getting ready to go to the lecture, uh, the pain by the, uh, uh, by the business is, you know, losing the time to sleep more. And the pain by the customer, the lecturer, his uh, lecturer is disturbed when students are coming late to the lecture. The goal statement, goal statement, what are we trying to improve? We can use a uh, smart criteria to define the goal statement. And in here, of course, the goal state, the goal that we identify the measurement uh, is, is the dependent uh, variable and uh, corresponding independent variables also we need to identify in this case. The project scope, the area within the control of the project team, we take as the project scope. The project plan, of course, the milestones that has to be achieved within a given a time frame. So that we will elaborate under the project plan. Team selection, who's going to be involved in the project. So in using this methodology, there are mainly three approaches we use in, uh, in applying Six Sigma or continuous improvement. So in this triangle, it shows these three approaches. Of course, DMAKE, CPS, CPS by the name is Caterpillar Production System. You would have also heard about Toyota Production System, uh, which is named as TPS. So similar to that, this is Caterpillar Production System. So I'm bringing up the learnings from Caterpillar Production System to you all. So that's why that word refers to as Caterpillar Production System. So uh, improvement process, wherever we are trying to improve an existing process, we use the DMA, CPS or Lean methodology. And whenever we are trying to do the process management, we are going to sustain the benefits of already improved process, we use PDCU. You 
most of you must be familiar with PDCA plan do check act cycle but a new process where we uh, where we launch a new product or new service or something new that we haven't done previously we use DMAD methodology for that sometimes we also call this DFSS design for six sigma as well so mainly we are going to focus a little bit more on the DMAKE methodology in our approach in this program so in the DMAKE methodology what we mainly focus is okay we can be having a business problem we see the analytical or statistical problem in this business problem so convert the business problem to rather statistical or analytical problem then we use analytical and statistical tools in solving this problem and then implement the solutions in the business context based on the solutions found using the statistical and analytical this is what happens in the d make cycle define measure analyze improve and control during this process there can be various tools being used uh, tools such as you must be familiar things like pareto 80 20 rule where it believes uh, there's 80% uh, of uh, problems happens due to 20% of root causes similarly said 90% uh, of world gdp is coming from 10% of country so similarly this law of uh, uh, search for significance is focused in the pareto analysis this is one of the tools being used probably you are familiar with this so however apart from this during this dmake cycle coming from define measure analyze improve and control uh, in the defined opportunities we identify the problem be specific about the problem and validate the problem okay somebody and come could be coming and telling me uh, look there is a problem we need to fight the problem but before going to battle the problem we need to validate we need to validate is there a problem for real so we always rely on facts and data so so validate the problem as well during the defined stage and then measure performance so uh, when when the problem is there due to deviation of customer requirement and uh, between the delivery and the customer requirement so there's a process in there. in this process there's a uh, there are measurements in there so what are we going to measure or what is the dependent variable what is what are the independent variables and what type of measurements are we going to capture what are the kpis in there so that is being discussed in the measure stage so data collection plan will be done operational definitions will be there to make sure everybody collects the same type of data uh, and when we have the data we go to the analyze phase in the analyze phase we do the analysis of data finally to figure out the main thing the problem statement the problem statement is the key deliverable of the analysis stage which is going to be used for the rest of the uh, two stages and uh, improve and uh, control stages so using this problem statement we focus on what kind of solutions has to be achieved so the problem statement needs to explain the root causes of the problem major root causes of the problem not anything else it has to explain in a factual way how uh, the uh, problem is occurring and what are the root causes we use mainly the numbers facts and figures again i'm explaining not objective based elaborative ex explanation about the problem statement but rather number based factual uh, back with data we develop this problem statement so apart from uh, dmake methodology certainly uh, the value stream transformation projects are also there uh, which has mainly uh, four phases in its development uh, pre work find it fix it and sustain it are the four phases of course dmake methodology goes underlying this principle as well uh, during the pre work stage of course define and measure uh, related work take place in these projects uh, in find it space again measure and analysis where we find the problem where the problem is 
mainly in a value stream where where are the bottlenecks so we find where the problem is during the finding and then fix it is the improve state where we implement the solution sustain it is the control state where we uh, make the uh, sustaining measurements to make sure the benefits are uh, ensured in the time uh, to come for the future generations as well so apart from vst projects there are riw projects as well so this is also a rigorous uh, focus on uh, identified area of uh, of improvement uh, which is which is given nine weeks of time limit it has uh, four weeks of pre work which focus on defining and measuring uh, stages of the project and then one week of focused work during this one week the entire project team will work together will from uh, from in the morning when they come to work evening they go home they meet in the same place stay together and work in collaboration towards achieving the goal so uh during this five work days also they have specific things to achieve in a riw project as well and then after the five days of course after celebrations of approving whatever the benefits uh are then four weeks of follow up to make sure the implementation plan is adhered to uh, implementation plan is focused and make sure it is implemented and the benefits are uh, ensured uh from the project so uh, during uh, irrelevant of whether it is a d make uh, six sigma project vst project or an riw project there are certain tools that we make use in these type of project so these tools mainly consist of yes traditional set of tools as well as some other additional tools so these tools uh, some of them you might already have heard about uh, some of these tools has a six sigma origin where it comes from a factual and statistical basis and some of the other tools uh, will have origin from lean but what is more important is knowing about the tool and where to apply the tool uh, is the question is what we have to learn where are their origins is not really related when we want to apply the tool we need to know how to apply it and where to apply it. so of course measurement system analysis control charts confidence intervals fmea that means failure mode defect analysis doe design of experiment uh, full factorial and fractional factorial experiments uh, maybe you have heard about these uh, in statistics uh, anova analysis of variances time series analysis regression analysis apart from that some additional tools like error proofing in lean they also call this popeye okay uh, base box visual workplace uh, uh, with using tools like pyvest uh, and certainly standard work and spaghetti diagram so these are some of the tools there are more so many other tools as well which we make use of in green belt and black belt projects uh, based on the uh, complexity of the project now we need to know what are the wastes that we have to identify during these projects as well so some of you who have studied about lean have would have probably heard about seven wastes coming out of lean so in under cps and the catapult production system we identify eight wastes so these are the eight wastes we uh, focus in uh, cps so uh, can anybody uh, figure out identify what is that additional waste somebody familiar with uh, lean some uh, chat messages are coming into me yes it is the unused uh, unused creativity and capability and this waste is actually taken as the most important waste under caterpillar production system for the reason being 
uh, at the presence of these particular waste, none of the other wastes would be visible because when people are not motivated or when their capabilities are not being used to identify these waste, people would rather ignore, okay, now we'll see the defects can be lying here and there, but people can be ignoring that, that defects. They can be ignoring the overproductions taking place. They could be ignoring about the waiting taking. So if there's no positivity within people to use their skills and their capabilities to fight these uh, waste, that is the utmost, the most important place. So in that case, we we rather uh, quite give high importance to change management, uh, uh, getting the acceptance of people who needs uh, who who needs to implement the changes. Because whenever we talk about uh, improvement being introduced to a process, improvement also means that is change. Somebody is going to do something different. So they can be thinking, okay, now, so, so many years I've been doing this, who is this person all of a sudden come here and tell me uh, uh, to do it in a different way. So that change management thinking has to be tackled in a very careful way. That is also being given very much attention on the CPS uh, learning material. So uh, in finding ways, of course, we do, in identifying ways, we need to know what customer expect. So how do we identify what customer expect? Voice of the customer or critical customer requirement, in other words, how do we identify? So there are actually mainly three types of VOC, voice of customer, performance needs, basic needs, and excitement needs. I'll tell you this with a small example. Say, uh, think about, uh, uh, about 10 years ago, when somebody is looking to buy a vehicle, you are thinking about buying a full option vehicle. So you maybe see an advertisement on the paper and then you call and ask, uh, is this a full option vehicle? So when you ask us, then the seller might say, uh, this has three options, other two options are not there. So maybe for a portion of the cost, portion of the price, you might agree for three options as well. So this is a spoken need. You ask whether those specific specification is available. In specifically, you specify and ask about. So this is a performance needs, and you are willing to compromise uh, your cost versus whatever the available features towards that. And then, uh, uh, will you ever ask when you are trying to buy a vehicle for your usage? Uh, from the seller, you call and ask, are you ever asking, uh, does the vehicle have the steering wheel? <laughs> no, never. You never ask whether there's a steering wheel. And you would never ask, uh, are the four wheels there? Or are the seats also there with the vehicle? Will you ever ask that? No, because you expect it to be there. So these are unspoken needs. Rather, these are base, basic needs. And you uh, you somehow settle with the vehicle, uh, negotiate with the seller, and you buy the vehicle and go home. And once you go home, you realize, oh my goodness, this vehicle also has a nice setup, nice audio setup. Or maybe now today when you purchase the vehicle, you realize all of a sudden this vehicle has the uh, autonomous driving. Oh my goodness. You never expected that to be there. But when that feature is available, now you are excited that feature is available. So those we call as excitement needs. But also, uh, it's a matter of time, be mindful, it's a matter of time only, these excitement needs become performance needs, and the performance needs become basic needs. For example, now today when you try to buy a new vehicle, you don't ask whether it is full option. You expect that vehicle to be full option. So this is how we identify customer requirements, customer needs. So after we identify the customer requirements, yes, we, we need a process to convert our inputs to uh, the customer uh, expected final output. In this, we identify a process chart. So in drawing process charts, 
mainly there are uh, four types of process charts site of process charts top down process charts functional deployment and value stream so these process charts being used uh, in under various circumstances as as the situation demands so uh, these the, these are not going to be elaborated today uh, these areas are uh, further in detail being discussed at white belt and green belt trainings uh, under cps curriculum so when we after we have the process flow diagram then it is about how to improve the process when we talk about improvement doing something better so adjectives are no more can be used with six sigma or lean professionals we use fact based improvement so there has to be a measurement of it. so there has to be a kpi or key performance indicator so when we take kpi so there are three types of uh, kpi output indicators process indicators and input indicators output indicators are rather uh, lagging indicators those are only explaining about what it is right now things like okay now last week what was the defect rate so we can we can we can't do anything about it right now we can just see and have that feeling factor so mainly dependent variables come from output variables and project goals are also sometimes coming from uh, output indicators but when it comes to process indicators and input indicators we call them as leading indicators as well because we see the process indicators prior to final product or service being delivered so if something is wrong in the process that means something is going to be wrong with the final output final output service or the product then the process indicator or input indicators can give us a sing signal there may be something wrong here maybe you are manufacturing or maybe you are developing a defective product so these are leading indicators these are very important in identifying uh, uh, identifying in the processes so these are the main things that we focus in six sigma projects in identifying uh, uh, as independent variables so we have processes we have kpis and now we collect the data related to these measurements when we have data we need to know about statistics so in statistics mainly there are two branches probably you have heard about this as well descriptive statistics and inferential statistics so descriptive statistics are used to describe about a set of data that we have could be by graphical means using various graphs histograms box plot or any any sort of graph or uh, uh, any kind of measurement kind of central tendency measurement mean mode median or maybe a variability related measurement uh, like range uh, variation standard deviation or any kind of uh, description about the data that does that is present and then the inferential statistics so statistically we call we use inferential statistics to infer about a population using sample statistics uh, we used to estimate about the population characteristics using the sample characteristics using inferential statistics probably you know about the uh, confidence intervals hypothesis test and so on uh, used in inferential statistics in this way the uh, statistical models we use mainly we try to rely on uh, continuous data when it comes to analysis uh, the dependent variable and the independent variable both being continuous is the best data that we could be using for analysis yes uh, 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 continuous dependent variable with in uh, discrete independent variable also could be okay uh, for, for example uh, this situation both being continuous uh, could be a situation where you know uh, in a factory the lighting level the lux level versus the productivity both measurements are continuous lux level is continuous productivity is continuous similarly the engine temperature and the viscosity of the oil both that to also are continuous parameters uh, dependent and independent variables in a context when it comes to uh, continuous and discrete uh, situation it could be okay now in the case you getting ready to go to the lecture in the morning okay you can be having two routes to go 
so uh, the time taken to go to the lecture the time is a continuous variable the routes you take route 1 root b are two discrete it's discrete so that kind of situations can use this type of uh, platform there yeah. we use the statistical uh, analysis use anova in this situation and here we use regression of course the continuous data is always better we have to uh, strive to con uh, uh, collect a continuous data uh, we will be elaborating more on this why the continuous data is has more informational value and how uh, how uh, it happens will be uh, can be explained uh, during the uh, white belt or the green belt program uh, due to the interest of time at this time, at this moment uh, so we always have to strive to collect continuous data so when all the data is available then we do the analysis to come up with the problem statement if you have heard about this once einstein said if i had an hour to solve a problem i'd spend 55 minutes thinking about the problem so knowing the problem precisely is important is not important is very important to find the solution without knowing the problem you can't find a solution it's it's also in a way it's a, a comparison between the effectiveness and efficiency Effectiveness is always important more than the efficiency. Say you have a ladder, you need to climb a ladder. It's not very important the speed you climb the ladder. Yes, sometimes it is important as well, but is the ladder leaning against the right wall is more important than the speed you use to climb the ladder. So this is effectiveness versus efficiency. Effectiveness is always important, more important than the efficiency. You need to be delivering the right product. Even when you are improving a process, you need to first ensure the quality and then you improve the velocity, the speed of the process after making the process stable in, uh, in developing quality product. So then we'll see how can a, a project fail not only a Six Sigma project, any project can fail due to, say, fussy definition of desired state, where we want to go, what kind of solutions do we want to implement. So this area is being addressed with the continuous improvement tools that we use, could be uh, Six Sigma tools, Lean tools, CPS tools, uh, any type of tool we use, we, we can be certain about what is the desired state. Uh, Plan for implementation, certainly we focus about the plan for implementation in Six Sigma projects, but most of the time what is being ignored is the potential resistance. We need to be mindful about the potential resistance as well, rather dealt with the potential resistance earlier is better. Get people on board with your improvement project rather than getting them reluctant or getting them resistant resistant towards your initial certainly yes six sigma continuous improvement defines the change the business risk management is also there and the change management plays a significant role in this picture uh, this is a formula that we try to uh, elaborate when it comes to uh, show the importance of change management say results uh, is equal to the quality of the solution and the acceptance of people. Say we have a very good solution, which is 100% quality, 100% effective uh, solution is available, but it is accepted by people only 60%. Uh, so in that context, we can only have a result of 60% of result using uh, such a uh, solution. But say there is a mediocre solution, slightly mediocre solution, which is about 80% uh, effective, but has the uh, acceptance of people 100%. So this kind of solution can certainly give more results than that best solution we have. So we need to always be mindful about acceptance of people, rather winning the 
parts of the people is important in terms of selling the solutions to these people, the change targets. Uh, so when it comes to the getting the uh, team members commitment, could it be a change agent or change target due to the due to your project improvement project, it is always important to drive them against commitment drive. If they go to compliance mindset, what will happen is, okay, because the boss is telling me to do, I will just do it. Because he is telling me, otherwise I'll be in trouble if he, if I don't do, then I will do it. So that is the compliance mindset. But commitment mindset is that, okay, now he's, he's a new guy. He, he probably doesn't understand what real the process, real process is, but it seems like this solution, this recommendation is important and it is correct. So he's acceptable. He's, he has to buy in. He accepts that solution that it is a good solution. So it does not happen overnight. It happens from the beginning. You have to keep them engaged with the process and there is a process of engaging them uh, during this decision making process. So they are part of identifying these solutions. That is very important in implementing solutions. Otherwise, on the design point of view, we can have all the red carpeted nice solutions on our paper, on our project, on our presentation and on our book. But when it goes to implementation, nobody accepts your solutions and then it is deriving no commercial benefit. So this is, this is very important uh, aspect of chain management when it comes to it. And then it can drive to Six Sigma encoding process in an organization starting with could be starting with a complying mindset and then committing uh, commitment take found by people due to uh, the, the usage or seeing benefits out of complying state and then embedded in an organization with the skills and tools being given to become it's an encoded in an organization rather become kind of like a DNA of an organization. So that is the Six Sigma or lean encoding process in an organization. Uh, so that uh, actually uh, bring, come, brings to end of our uh, program. Uh, this was a brief introduction about the Six Sigma methodology, uh, lean Six Sigma methodology. So if you have uh, any questions we can discuss. Meanwhile, uh, uh, you can take up the uh, uh, evaluation form as well. Uh, it's available on the uh, in this link. You, uh, you can scan scan this QR code also to uh, access the evaluation form. Uh, otherwise, we, we can take the uh, questions. Or you can type in your questions as well in, in, in chat, so I can take it from there. We mainly focused in this training to give you an idea, overview of what Lean Six Sigma means, how it works in a commercial organization, and what are the important tools but in detail explaining these tools due to interest of time is not uh, really possible during this time. But of course, uh, we'll explain during the next coming sessions uh, uh, in White Belt program or in a, maybe in a Green Belt program, or you can connect with me uh, in any uh, uh, media in, in LinkedIn. Uh, so uh, there also I can share with you these details. Uh, if at all, let me share this uh, link in the chat so you can click and uh, uh, take the evaluation. Uh, can you see the uh, evaluation form link? Uh, this evaluation form also will lead you to a, a revision of some revision questions uh, which we discussed uh, during the session. 
you can also uh, uh, see uh, you, uh, the answers are also there in the revision uh, questions as well. Uh, once you answer the questions, you can see the uh, answers as well for you to see how it, uh, uh, what we learned during this session. Uh, yes, there is a question about uh, uh, whether we can organize. Yes, uh, you can contact me uh, for uh, for any other sessions uh, you want to organize in other forum. Uh, your uh, feedback is important to us. Uh, it's highly appreciated if you can give us your feedback in improving these training programs are on continuous improvement basis we improve these training sessions based on your input so uh, please uh, give us your feedback on that and after giving your feedback you can also uh, uh, proceed to do the evaluation uh, the the revision uh, uh, questions as well so where you can uh, revise your knowledge on the things we discuss during today's session. Uh, with that, uh, I would uh, like to uh, uh, Seems like uh, there are no uh, more questions. With the interest of time, uh, let me, okay, now this was the link to the uh, session. Uh, let me wind up the session uh, for me and give the controls to uh, the moderator. So these were some of the trainings we organized at I IESL. Uh, and uh, uh, my quote is, you don't have to uh, be great to start, but you have to start to be great. Uh, and let me hand over the controls to Gayan, uh, our moderator. Thank you very much. Thank you, Taraka. I think we spent a valuable one hour with this knowledge shared by Taraka Dayabandar on Lean Six Sigma. So he very well explain how we can make use of it to improve what we do in day-to-day -day life maybe in your business or it could be even related to your personal life a uh, webinar in this nature uh, even though scheduled to a one hour this cannot be organized overnight so there are people who spend their time, committed their time on organizing such events. So we especially organized this session jointly with the Institute of uh, Institution of Mechanical Engineers student chapter of University of Peradeniya as well as the Mechanical Engineering Society of Faculty of Engineering University of Peradeniya. Uh, before Moving to the university committees, let me first thank Mr. Tarak Dayabandara on spending this one hour with this student.
students of the University of Peradeniya as well as others who have joined to this webinar during the past one hour. And also, there are two key people who are involved in organizing this event. First, let me thank Mr. Naud Tiyashan, the President of Mechanical Engineering Society, Faculty of Engineering of the University of Peradeniya. So he did a great job in organizing this event, along with Mr. Tishum Samarasinghe, the President of the Institution of Mechanical Engineers Student Chapter of the University of Peradeniya. Without your support, this would have not been a success. Tishum and Naud, a thanks and applause from everyone. And also, a leadership is also important for them to perform in this manner. So let me thank Dr. Asang Rasnavira, the head of the Department of Mechanical Engineering, and all the academic staff of University of Peradeniya, giving the opportunity for these young leaders to perform in this manner. So without taking much time, uh, we all always appreciate if you could take your time, two minutes of your time and fill the evaluation sheet so that we will have your feedback straight away. And also, until we join in another session like this, good evening to everyone. Have a nice evening. Good night.